China's most influential philosopher and thinker, Confucius, or Kongzi, once said, it is better to play than to do nothing. It is interesting how a man who lived 2,500 years ago still rings true to us today. I recently became a new father. Again, now we have two children and we will expect a lot more noise in the house. This is Jia Han, and Jia Han is my older daughter. And I know Jia Han sounds like fried rice in Japanese. And I love fried rice very much, but I can assure you that's a pure coincidence. When we brought her into the world, we wanted her to explore the things that we know and the things that we think we want her to, to learn. And most importantly, we also wanted her to play and to have fun. Just about a year ago, when Jia Han was 19 months old, we brought her to the playgrounds in Singapore, where we used to live. And immediately, she understood that the playgrounds is a world created for her. The real world out there is a bit too complicated and too big for her. The doorknobs, the staircases are often too wide and too, too far away for a two-year-old. But then, the playgrounds is colorful. The foam mats are padded, and there are slides that you can play around. She immediately understood that this was her world. On that day itself, we brought her to six playgrounds. And at the end of the day, she attempted the largest slide of her life. This is the picture. I love the determination on her face, that singular focus. And most importantly, there was an attitude in her that says, with this, I can do anything. That experience reminded me of my own experience when I was young with playgrounds. I remember when I was a child, after school, I would still be very restless and I have a lot of energy. And all I would do is to go to the playgrounds, play, kick my friends off the monkey bars, and only return home when my knees and elbows are bruised and sweaty. And it also got back to me and wonder, what do I make sense of this? Because since then, I feel very detached from playgrounds. So as a parent and as a photographer, I decided to explore a photo project surrounding playgrounds. And I decided to photograph them from the air. This is the same playground that Jia Han went. And this is taken from the sky. And I think there is something different when you see things from a perspective that they are not used to. This playground is photographed in Tiong Bahru in Singapore. And it is one of the earliest housing estates in Singapore that was built in the 1950s. When you photograph playgrounds from the air, something magical happens. I feel that there is just something spiritual about looking at something from above directly down. Initially, when we did, did this project, I did not expect to see some of the things we discover. For example, a snail peeking up towards the sky, almost as if the playground has always been created for someone to see from above. This is a train structure, a playground, which I was playing myself when I was young, and I had very fond memories there. This is another playground that is surrounded by a beautiful canopy of trees and greenery. And this is a playground that is housed in a very dense housing estate and also exemplifies how playgrounds are viewed within the society and utilized. And this is a playground that is situated in a very new housing estate in Singapore. This is photographed in Pongo, one of the newest housing estates in Singapore. And if you notice, this playground is created on a six-story, multi-story car park right at the rooftop. And since then, the playground where, um, so you actually have to take a lift up to the multi-story car park to the rooftop to play there. And this is another playground that is situated in Bukit Batok, one of my favorite places, 
where you actually t see two trains that is just passing by at the right moment, at a lucky moment. In the end, I have photographed 100 playgrounds across Singapore. This is a graph that shows the train networks in Singapore itself, and all the white dots shows that we have at least photographed a playground in each of these stations. And the bigger question is, what have we learned? First of all, we learned that every playground is unique. The cartoons is all different. The slides, the stairs are all created a bit differently. And we find that every playground is unique. And secondly, we find that there are a lot of playgrounds in Singapore. There are nearly 1,500 playgrounds in Singapore, as we found. And Singapore is not exactly a very big country. If I were to take my bicycle and I start from one end, I can cycle to the other end in less than two hours. Singapore is one of the densest countries in the world, with about five million people living in this nation state. There are nearly 7,000 people living per square kilometer. And all the playgrounds that I photograph are all situated in public housing estates, meaning anyone can just walk to a playground and play. In comparison, Tokyo, which is Japan's most populous metropolis, has about 6,000 people per square kilometer living there. So just imagine during rush hour. And of course, playgrounds have also come a long way. The first playgrounds were made back in the late 19th century in England. And the first playground was introduced to Singapore back in the 1950s. And of course, playgrounds have evolved since, but certainly no less fun. What we also find is that the playgrounds today are also very customized. We find playgrounds that are meant for two to five year olds, five to 10 year olds, and even playgrounds that is meant for teenagers. I remember recently I did an interview with a radio in Singapore. And just before we did the interview, we were in the reception room and the radio DJ came over and spoke to me. And he said, Stefan, I know you are doing this project, photographing playgrounds from the air. Very interesting, but it must be so difficult but because there's hardly any playgrounds in Singapore. I found that to be quite an astonishing insight because I wanted to tell him there are 1,500 playgrounds in Singapore. The nearest playground is you just walk to one. But then I also get reminded that as adults, what is not relevant to us also becomes invisible to us. This is how we photograph playgrounds. We build a customized drone, put a camera on it, and then we fly up to the sky and I find an appropriate height to photograph the playground. Very often, when we do the shoots at these playgrounds, we get approached by children, by parents, who are just very curious in what we are doing. I remember we were photographing one playground, and a child came up to me and said, wow, you must be photographing my playground, right? I said, yes. Are you photographing the seahorse? And I didn't understand him at first. But as we flew up towards the sky, I discovered that indeed there is a seahorse and there are two fishes just right in this playground. And I get reminded that we need to be looking at the final details in life, on the little tidbits in life that makes life interesting. And more importantly, this project has also helped me to see through the eyes of a child again. And sometimes you even see playgrounds where you even have a small Mickey Mouse just looking at us. And I'm sure the original architect may not have intended for this, but everything just reveals itself when you're up in the air. And so, in conclusion, you should just take your child out to play today. Thank you very much.